Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. I've got a fun little video for you here today. We're gonna take a PC like this one right here and convert it into a home gaming console. So the idea here is that we could take this thing, put it in our living room entertainment center, plug it into our TV, and then treat it like a home console, but focused on retro gaming and emulation. And I think this is a great solution if you happen to have an older PC lying around or you wanna buy one of these cheaper mini PCs. This one right here is the B-Link EQ12. It cost around $200, $250. And in full disclosure, B-Link sent this over to me for review, but when I plugged it in and started doing Windows-based games, things like that, I really didn't like the performance, and so I didn't think I was going to get a great review. Instead, I talked to the company, I said, you know what, this is going to be a good example of when sometimes it's better to use something that isn't Windows, and so we're going to install Botticera. And if you've never heard of Botticera, this is a Linux-based custom operating system. It has a much lower overhead than Windows, and so because of that, you can get some really good performance, and it's very focused on gaming itself, like you can control the entire navigation with just one controller. And so here in this video, I have two different purposes. Number one is it's going to be a Botticera setup guide to show you how to get this up and running. But then also I wanna talk about some of the nuances that come when setting up a home console. For example, how do you get it to work with two different controllers at once if you wanna do multiplayer? And I also wanna show a neat little trick where you can actually put PC games directly on this via Botticera as well. And so you can connect to your Steam library, play some lightweight PC games along with all of your retro classics. Either way, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this video right here. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, as we get started here, if you're new to the channel, I do have a written guide that'll be linked down below. And this will give you a list of all the recommended tools and other stuff that you need to get you started. And if I happen to go a little bit too fast through any of these steps, you should be able to find them in written form down below. Now, first thing we're gonna do here is choose a PC that we're gonna use for our console. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna be using the EQ12 in this video here. And this one features the Intel N100 CPU. This is a relatively new budget-minded processor. And one of the other things I like about it is that it comes in four different colors, which is pretty neat, especially if you're gonna have it in your living room. But of course, the EQ12 is not the only mini PC out there. In fact, there are many to choose from. In fact, within that two to $400 price point, there's a lot of B-Link mini PCs that are really great. Another mini PC company I think does really good work is Mini's Forum. These PCs are a little bit more expensive, but pack a lot of power and features as well. In fact, also linked below, I will have my mini PC spreadsheet. So I've reviewed about 30 of these altogether. And here you can see a listing of all the different models I've tested, their price points, and the expected performance. But bear in mind that most of this was tested on a Windows environment, so it may not be apples to apples. But also I do have a Botticera column on the far right, and I usually will test these mini PCs on this operating system as well. Now, if you already have a PC laying around, you can totally use that. And another option would be to buy a smaller form factor PC on eBay. Generally, these are gonna be used office PCs, but many of them have space for a low profile graphics card. So if you're comfortable going this route, you can get a pretty great experience for about two, $300 altogether. Either way, my point here is that you have many options when it comes to PCs, and this video here is gonna work for any of these. Now, if you're curious of what kind of performance you can expect for this price point of about $240, let me show you real quick what I got out of the EQ12. To start, I was able to play all classic systems and arcade games all the way up through Killer Instinct. After that, we have what I consider to be our 32-bit or 16-bit systems. This is going to include the PlayStation 1, Nintendo 64, as well as the Sega Saturn, Sega Dreamcast, and PlayStation Portable. In each of these examples, I was able to upscale these graphics up to a 1080p and they ran wonderfully. So if you're looking to play retro content specifically up through the PSP era, you'll be able to play these no problem on this machine. And because you're probably gonna have it hooked up to a living room TV, it's gonna be really nice to be able to upscale them to 1080p as well. Now, once you get beyond that, there will be some compromises. For example, most Nintendo GameCube games will play at 1080p, but the harder ones to run like F-Zero GX will need to be downscaled to their normal native resolution. And it's a similar story with PlayStation 2. Most games will run at 720p, no problem, but those harder to run games like God of War 2 will have to be played natively. One nice thing about Botticera is that the performance for Xbox and 3DS emulation is actually a little bit better than it is on Windows. And so for example, I was able to play quite a few original Xbox games at their native resolution. This is a system that will require a much more powerful PC if you wanna play it on Windows. Same thing with 3DS, I was able to play most games at a 2X or a 3X resolution and they played great. 
I also found that most Nintendo Wii U games actually played at a full speed, but I did notice that with this emulator in particular, I was getting quite a bit of screen tearing in 3D-based games. This is a pretty common problem within Botticera and the Simu emulator in particular. Either way, this is basically as far as the EQ12 can handle in terms of emulation performance. Once you get into the more complicated systems like PlayStation 3, unfortunately it just can't keep up. Even the most lightweight games like Afterburner Climax cannot play at full speed, and if you try to play anything more heavyweight than that, for example Dead or Alive 5, this one just crawls. So I would say this is definitely not capable of PlayStation 3 emulation. Now Botticera recently added Xbox 360 emulation to their console, but unfortunately this is also a system that does not play well on the EQ12. So in the end, that's going to give you an idea of what kind of gaming experience you can expect for about $240 altogether. And don't forget the fact that we can also play some lightweight Steam games, which I'll show later in this video. This feature alone is going to open up a lot of possibilities when it comes to lightweight indie gaming too. Finally, one other thing to think about when picking up a PC is what kind of ports you're going to want. For example, I love the fact that the EQ12 has two different USB-A ports right here on the front. This will make it very easy to plug in controllers without having to reach around the back. Now on the back we also have some good connectivity. We have HDMI out for the video, but then also Ethernet and a couple additional USB ports. Anyway, once you've settled down on whatever PC you want to use, let's go ahead and get started with actually setting it up. And the first thing we need to do is install the Botticera operating system. And for this setup, I recommend using a hard drive that's separate from the Windows drive that you already have on your computer. And I have three different reasons why I recommend this setup in particular. Number one, solid state drives are fast and reliable, but then they're also relatively cheap. For example, in today's setup, we're going to use a one terabyte solid state drive, which is currently about $50 on Amazon. Additionally, one of the reasons why I like using this setup is that if you want to return to using it as a Windows PC, it's very easy to go back. And then finally, when we're done setting all of this up, the Botticera hard drive itself is going to be self-contained. And so if later down the line you decide to upgrade to a better PC, you can actually take this hard drive out, put it into that new PC, and immediately start gaming just like that. Long story short, there are many ways to install Botticera, including on a flash drive or an SD card, but personally for this setup right here, we're going to use a solid state drive like this. And so our first step here is to install this hard drive into the computer. And this is one of those areas where a B-Link mini PC really shines. To start, they have all the screw holes within the rubber feet, which makes them very easy to access. But also the bottom cover has this little rubber tab on it, and it's very easy to pull it off once you've unscrewed it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to unscrew it here, then we can use the rubber tab to pull the bottom off. And as you can see, there's already a slot right here for our hard drive. So installation is as simple as just lining up the pins and then just pushing it into place. And really, it's as easy as that. So let's go ahead and close up the mini PC and actually get started with installing Botticera. Now when you boot up Windows, I recommend going into the Disk Management tool. If you're using a brand new hard drive like I am, you're probably going to see that it's unallocated like this. Or you might be using a used hard drive, which is perfectly fine as well. What I recommend here is to actually start with a clean hard drive, so what we're going to do is format it to make a simple volume. And if you have a blank hard drive like mine right here, it's as simple as just right clicking on it here and selecting New Simple Volume. From there, you can just click through all of these prompts until you get to the end. From there, it's going to format the drive and assign it a drive letter. As you can see right here, mine is labeled as D. And so now we're ready to install Botticera on this hard drive. First things first, we need to grab the operating system. You can find this on the Botticera website at Botticera.org. You've got a few different options to choose from, but I recommend the top left one here that says desktop, laptop, and other computers. It's about two and a half gigs, so it might take a minute. And while we're waiting, let me introduce you to the Botticera wiki page. If you happen to run into any issues at all during this entire process, the wiki page probably has you covered. In fact, I personally spend a lot of time on this page myself, just making sure that I understand everything about Botticera. And one of my favorite pages here is the emulators and port sections under all systems. Here you can navigate through every single system that is supported by Botticera and read more about it. One thing to note here is the most recent platform that is supported by Botticera is the Nintendo Wii U. And that's because the Botticera team does not officially support emulating any sort of system that's currently on the market. So for example, it is possible to install Nintendo Switch emulation on this, but not through official channels here on Botticera. However, if you want to dive further into Botticera, then I recommend checking out the Botticera Nation YouTube channel. This is a really great channel that is focused specifically on getting the most out of Botticera. Either way, once we're done downloading Botticera, our next step is to download a tool that will allow us to flash it onto that hard drive. And there's a lot of different tools that you can use, but the one we're going to use in this video here is called Belena Etcher. So just go ahead and download the Windows version right here. 
Once you're done, you should have two different files downloaded, Belen Etcher as well as the Bodicera image file itself. So let's go ahead and open up Belen Etcher. Here on the left, we're going to select Flash from File and then navigate to our Bodicera image. After that, we're going to select Target, and within here, your drive might be hidden. But as you can see, we have that one terabyte drive with the D drive letter. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one and then press Flash. It's going to give you a warning and saying, hey, this is like a computer hard drive. You sure you want to do this? And you're going to select, yeah, man, I want to do it. After that, you'll get another prompt to say, do you really want to do this? And you know what to do. From there, it'll take a minute or two to flash Bodicera onto the hard drive. And really, that's it. We're done installing Bodicera onto this device. Now next, we want to make sure that anytime we turn on this mini PC, it goes into Bodicera and not Windows. And booting into Bodicera is a pretty easy process, but you need one specific tool. And that's going to be a USB keyboard. You're not going to be able to use a Bluetooth keyboard. You need something that can plug directly into the computer. So if you have one of these old keyboards, I would recommend grabbing it and dusting it off. Now personally, I use this keyboard right here. And there's a few reasons for it. Number one, it's small and wireless, but then also it has a trackpad on the top. So this can function as both a mouse and a keyboard. And the nice thing here is that it comes with a USB dongle. And so this is basically the same as using a wired keyboard, but a little bit more convenient. Either way, if you already have a USB keyboard and mouse, then you're good to go. Next step is we're going to plug in that keyboard, then reboot our PC. From there, as soon as the PC boots up again, you're going to tap on the delete key a bunch of times. And after a moment, it's going to boot into the BIOS, and this is what it looks like right here. Now it's probably going to look intimidating, but don't worry, this is a very simple setup. We just want to move over to the right until we get to the boot tab. From there, we want to find the menu that will show you the different boot order priorities. And as you can see, Windows is option number one. What we're going to do here is swap these out. So we're going to make the hard drive the option number one, and that should automatically move down the Windows Boot Manager. Essentially, what you're telling your computer right here is that it's going to boot into Bodicera first. And in most cases, that's all you have to do. We're actually done setting this up. However, some PCs will have what they call Secure Boot enabled. This is very common when you buy something like a Dell or an HP computer. And if you look here under the Security tab, you can see there is a Secure Boot section, and with my computer right here, it's disabled. However, if your computer does have Secure Boot enabled, you may have to turn that off first. And the way you disable that is going to be different depending on your manufacturer. So if you do run into any issues with this step, I would recommend checking out the Bodicera wiki page because they have a lot of good solutions there. But chances are you'll have to go to your manufacturer's webpage to learn how to disable the secure boot. Either way, once you're done changing the boot priority, go over to the far right and then select Save Changes and Exit. And after you confirm, it's going to reset your computer and then boot into Bodicera. Now when you first boot into it, it's going to take an extra minute or two to initialize the system, but after a moment you should see the Bodicera splash screen and you'll be inside. And congratulations, you have now installed Bodicera on your PC. Now for the next step, we need to navigate the interface, and to do that we need a controller. So next we're going to talk about my recommended controller options. And honestly there's a million different ways to do this, but I personally really like the 8 Ultimate Controller. And I've done full reviews of these controllers here on my channel. In particular I really like the $50 2 GHz version. This one will come with a charging dock as well as a USB dongle, so you don't have to worry about Bluetooth connection. And it comes in three different colors, personally I have the pink one, I think it's the best looking. And essentially this is how it works, we have a cable that we plug into the back of the dock and then plug that into our PC. Now when you put the controller on the dock, it's going to charge that controller, as you can see with the white light here on the bottom. And the neat thing here is the USB connection dongle can actually go into the bottom of the dock. And so you won't have to take an additional port on your computer, all you have to do is actually plug this dongle directly into the dock, and then from there the one single cable that goes from your dock to your computer will both charge the controller but then also connect it when you take it off. And so this makes a very clean and seamless experience. All you have to do is just pull the controller off the dock and it'll automatically connect, and it connects super fast. It only takes a couple seconds to actually initialize. From there, when you're done playing, all you have to do is just plop the controller back onto the dock. At that point, it'll disconnect the controller and then start charging it as well. And so for me personally, I think this is the most convenient controller that you can buy right now, especially if you're going to be setting it up in a living room environment. Now you also have quite a few options when it comes to these models. For example, there's a $70 upgraded model. This one is called the Pro Controller and it has a few upgrades. For example, it has Hall Sensor Analog Sticks, which means they won't develop drift, and it also has gyroscopic control support as well. Additionally, this controller will work with the Nintendo Switch. I've done a whole review about this one as well. Additionally, if you want to save some money, there is now a $30 model that actually comes out next week. This one does not come with a dock, but it does have that wireless dongle, so it's going to be very easy to set up, but you'll have to charge it on your own. And it only comes in two different colors, purple and green. 
Along the same lines, if you want to save even more money, there's a $20 option as well. And then finally, it's also worth mentioning that 8 has an arcade stick that works really well. And I gotta say, they're not sponsoring this video at all, it just so happens that their controllers work really well with Botticera. Anyway, this stick right here is a little bit more on the expensive side, it's $90 right now, but does work with the Nintendo Switch too. And this will be a really nice setup if you do plan on playing mostly arcade games on your mini PC. And here's my arcade stick right here. I've had it for about a year and a half and I really like it. In fact, I've swapped out all of the buttons here to give it a better color scheme. And much like with the other controllers, this one works with a wireless dongle as well. And you can actually find it here in the back of the console. So all you'd have to do right here is just take this and plug it directly into the PC. And this arcade stick comes with its own battery and so you'll be able to play it wirelessly just like this. And honestly, this controller is the one that my family prefers. We only have one of them at the house and so everybody scrambles to be able to play with the arcade stick. Now, in addition to these 8 bit controllers, basically any other controller is going to work with Botticera. So, for example, if you have any Xbox or PlayStation controller, these will work as well. And theoretically, within the menu, there is a Bluetooth pairing option. But I have found that more often than not, I have a hard time pairing my controllers to Botticera. And a lot of that probably has to do with the Bluetooth drivers that they have within this operating system. But the nice thing here is that any of these controllers will work wired. So all you have to do is just plug them directly into the PC and it's going to pick up on it just like that. So if you have an Xbox or PlayStation controller lying around, this is what I would recommend instead of spending additional money. It does mean that you'll likely have to use a wired setup, but all the same, nothing beats free. And finally, one other note to mention about controllers is I do not recommend getting two of the same controller to play on Botticera. I found that more often than not, you'll get a conflict where they'll both think they're the same controller. And so if you do plan on using a multiplayer setup, which we'll talk about later in the video, I do recommend using two different types of controllers just to make sure there's no confusion within the operating system. Another thing I recommend doing once you initially have your controller set up is to go in and remap the buttons. And that's because some controllers will not work perfectly out of the box. And to set this up, it's pretty easy. You just press the start button to get into the main Botticera menu, then go into the controller and Bluetooth settings. The first option here is controller mapping. We're going to select that and it'll give you a quick warning and then it'll ask you to hold down on a button to configure it. After that, you'll be in this menu right here and you'll just want to press the button to correspond to whatever you see on the screen. Once you get down to the bottom, there's a hotkey option. I recommend using the select button right here. Anyway, after you're done with that, you're good to go when it comes to controllers. So now that we have Botticera installed and our controllers working properly, let's get into our initial setup of Botticera itself. Now, first thing I've always noticed with Botticera is that often I will not get any sound out of HDMI. So let me show you how to fix that real quick. We're going to go into the main menu and then go into system settings. From there, we're going to scroll down until we find the audio profile section. And usually what you want to do here is change it from auto to the first HDMI option. After you've selected that and then backed out of the menu, you should start hearing the background music here in the front end. And if you don't hear it, then I would recommend changing the audio profile to something else. Now, chances are you may not want to hear this music in the front end. If you want to turn that off, you want to go into sound settings. And then within here, there's a front end music option. Go ahead and toggle that off. And now that we have sound working, I think it's time to add our game files. And you'll see that there already are some games already loaded onto Botticera. Now these here are freeware games, and they're basically meant to be examples of how Botticera is going to work when you have it set up. And so our next step here is to add our own games. And of course, as you can imagine, on the Botticera wiki page, there's an entire section about how to add your games and BIOS files. And there's many different ways that you can do this, including wireless transfer. But for our example here, we're going to use the most simple process. And that is, we're going to load up all of our games onto a flash drive or an external drive like this one here. And so this drive right here is my own personal ROM collection. And what we're going to do is plug this directly into our Botticera PC and then transfer the files directly onto Botticera from there. And for this step, we're going to need a keyboard and mouse like the one that you see here. Now to transfer files, we need to get into the file manager, and this is pretty easy. When you're in the main Botticera interface like this, you just want to press the F1 key on your keyboard, and that's going to bring up our file manager right here. And so here you can see the file system within Botticera. In particular, I recommend paying attention to the BIOS and ROMs folders that you can see here on the left. Now to transfer our files over, all we have to do is plug in that flash drive. And as you can see, it showed up here on the left with the name emulation. Now if I go into here, I can navigate through my own personal ROM collection. And it's really just as simple as copying over games from here into Botticera. But before we start moving over the games, I recommend moving the BIOS files first. And if you're not familiar with BIOS, these are basically system files that are specific to certain consoles. And so depending on the system you're trying to play, BIOS files may be required. And of course, there's an entire section about this in the Botticera wiki. 
Personally, I think the easiest way to figure out the BIOS files is to go into the wiki here under the All Systems page. This is the one that I showed you earlier that'll give you a listing of everything that's supported within Botticera. And what we can do right here is click on any of these systems and it'll bring up a dedicated page. So for example, under Dreamcast, you can see it has a listing of all the different game type files that they'll accept, and it'll list off all the emulators that run on Botticera. But most importantly, they'll have a list of all the required BIOS files right here. Now BIOS files are copyrighted, and so because of that I can't tell you where to get them. However, you're obviously a very smart person because you clicked on a Retro Game Core video. And so I trust that you are going to be able to figure out where to find BIOS files on your own. Either way, here's a list of the BIOS files that I personally am going to use with my Botticera build. And this will include BIOS files for systems like Sega CD, Dreamcast, Game Boy Advance, and Sega Saturn. And to add them to Botticera, all I'm going to do is select them all and then move them into the BIOS folder right here. And really, that's about it in a nutshell. If you need to learn more about BIOS files, I recommend checking out the Botticera wiki. Now, after we've added our BIOS files, we are ready to add our game files. And if you look in the ROMs folder within Botticera, you can see it already is pre-populated with a bunch of different ROM folders right here. And the idea here is all you have to do is just grab your ROM files and then move them into the corresponding folder. Again, like with BIOS files, ROM files are copyrighted, so I can't tell you where to get them. And unfortunately, like I mentioned before, finding ROMs is just one of the great mysteries of life. There's just no way to actually find them. Anyway, once you've solved one of the great mysteries of the universe, we can go ahead and start adding our games. And I'm going to go into my own flash drive right here into my games folder. And let's move over some Sega 32X games here as an example. So I'm going to go into my own folder, and then I'm going to select all of my files and then copy them. From there, I'm going to go into the ROMs folder within Botticera, and then find the Sega 32X folder. After that, I'm going to paste in the files and I'm good to go. And essentially, it's going to be the same process for all the other systems. And really, that's about it when it comes to moving over your games. Now, if you run into any issues, like you don't know which file type to use, I recommend going into that Botticera wiki page and clicking on each of those systems, and it'll tell you exactly what you need to know. And this is probably going to be the most tedious task of this entire process. But the nice thing here is that you don't have to add all your games all at once. So if you want to go back and add an additional game later on, you can totally do that as well. Either way, like I mentioned, there are many different ways to add games to Botticera, but this one in particular I think is the most simple. Now once you're done moving over all your games, let's go ahead and close out of the file manager by going to File and then Close Window. Once you're back in the Botticera menu, press the Start button and then select Game Settings and Update Game Lists. From there, it's going to detect all the games that you've added, and so now they're all in your system. And so next step here is we're going to make Botticera pretty. And to do this, we're going to change out different themes and then also add box art and things like that. First things first, we need to make sure that we're connected to the internet. So we're going to open up the main menu and go into Network Settings. And if you're connected via Ethernet, you should already be hooked up to your network. But if you're going to use Wi-Fi, then you need to go down here and select Enable Wi-Fi. From there, you can browse the available networks and then add your password, and then you'll be connected. Now, once you're connected to the network, let's go ahead and open up the main menu again, and we're going to go into Updates and Downloads. Within here, we're going to go into the Theme section. And after a moment, you should see a bunch of different options come up right here. So what I recommend doing here is scroll through the available previews, and if you see one that you like, go ahead and start downloading it. I've already downloaded a bunch myself, so let me show you how to change the theme once you have it downloaded. For this, we're going to go into the main interface and go into User Interface Settings. And the first option right here is the Theme Set. After you've downloaded a bunch, you should see them as options right here. And there are many great themes within Botticera, but the one we're going to use here today is called Electful NX. So we're going to go ahead and select this and then back out of the menu. And just like that, we've now changed our theme. And essentially, this is how Botticera is going to work. You're going to navigate through your system, and then you'll choose one of them, and you can pick your game from there. However, once you get into the game selection menu, you will see that these games do not have any fancy box art. So that's the next step we're going to do. We're going to go back into the main menu by pressing Start, and then we're going to go into the Scraper section right here. And within here, I recommend going into the Scraper settings. And for me personally, I like to set my image source to Box 2D. But of course, that's all going to be up to you. Additionally, I like to scrape the videos as well, so we're going to turn those on too. And then finally, near the bottom, you can see there's a section for a username and password. And for this to work, you need to have a free account from screenscraper.fr. So all you have to do is just go to this website right here and then select register and then make a username and password. After that, you can add your username and password and you'll be good to go. So we're going to back out to the main 
scraper menu and then select scrape now. Now it's going to read through all of the games that I have on the system and then add the media. And as you can see, I have 909 games altogether. So this is going to take quite some time, at least an hour or two. Personally, I think one of the best things to do is to get this all set up and then leave it running overnight. Either way, once you're done scraping all of your art, you want to press the start button again, go into game settings and then select update games list. Now, when we go into any of these game menus, you should see the box art. And if you hover over it for a moment, you should also see a video play as well. And that's really about it. This is how you would make Bodicera pretty by changing out the theme as well as scraping all the media. And now that everything's looking nice, let's talk about how we can configure the systems and game settings. And most of the things that you want to change are actually going to be found within the main menu under game settings. Within here, you're going to have a bunch of different options, but there are a few I recommend paying attention to right here in the beginning. For example, if you go down to the save state section, you'll find auto save and load. And this one will be off by default, but I recommend turning it on. What'll happen is the very first time you start up a game like this one right here, you'll just start at the beginning of the game. Now, when you're done playing a game, you're going to hold on to the select button on your controller and then press start. That's going to exit out of your game, but as it exits, it's actually going to save your spot. Now, anytime we go back to that game and start it back up, it's actually going to resume exactly where we were last time when we were playing it. So obviously it's going to be totally up to you, but I think this is a really handy feature. Now another thing you may notice is that when playing retro games you might get these borders on the left and right. And these usually will correspond to whatever system you're playing. And these are called bezels and personally I think they look really nice. But I know there are people out there who would prefer just to have the plain black borders and so let me show you how to set those up. Again we're going to go into that game settings menu and then we're going to find the section called decorations. And within here you want to turn the decoration set to none. And that's going to disable any bezels for any of your systems. And so now when we jump into our game, as you can see, we're just going to get these black borders. Now, each of the changes that we've done right now are for the entire system level. What that means is if we change any of the game settings, it's going to apply to every system that we try to launch. Now, if there are certain systems you want to have different configurations for, you're going to want to go into this menu right here. It's called per system advanced configuration. And within here, you'll see a listing of all the different systems. And if you go into any of these, you'll have options that are specific to that system in particular. For example, if we want to make GameCube specific changes, we can go into the GameCube section. And here you can see that I'm using Vulkan as the graphics backend, and I've also set the rendering resolution to a 3x or 1080p. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, for the PC that I'm using right here, 1080p works for most GameCube games. However, with some of the harder games to emulate, like F-Zero GX, it's not going to play at full speed. And so while 1080p will work for most GameCube games, it won't work for some. And so next, I'm going to show you how to change settings per game instead. What you want to do here is hover over the game within the game menu, and then hold on to the A button to bring up the side menu here on the right. And near the bottom, you'll see a section called Advanced Game Options. And when you go within here, you're going to see that you can make changes at the system level, but specifically for F-Zero GX. So for example, I'm going to reduce the resolution down from a 3x to the native resolution. Now, anytime I start up F-Zero GX, it's going to play at a native resolution, but at full speed. Meanwhile, all my other GameCube games are going to run at 1080p. So this is a great way to adjust these settings for the entirety of Bodicera, or for an individual system, or for an individual game. And of course, like always, there are a lot more settings that you can change, and I recommend going to the Bodicera wiki page. Okay, in this next section, we're going to do something very exciting. We're going to add Steam games to Bodicera. And I'm going to show you two different ways that you can launch your Steam games. Number one, you can just boot into the Linux version of Steam. And as you can see, it looks a lot like SteamOS that you can find on the Steam Deck. And so what you can do here is launch Steam, find your game, and then boot it from here. However, if you'd like to stay within the Bodicera interface, you can also set that up too. And so in this section, I'm going to show you how to set up Steam so it'll work like any other system within Bodicera. To get started, make sure you have a keyboard and mouse plugged into your Bodicera PC. From there, we're going to press F1 again to get into the file manager. Now what we're going to do is go into the application section here near the top. By the way, if you ever need to get into any of the individual emulators, this is where you would go. Either way, we're going to open up the Flatpak application right here. And when you first open it up, it might give you this dialog box talking about a new version. Just go ahead and press OK. After a moment, you're going to get a list of suggested apps that you can install on your device. And in this example here, we're going to install Steam. So just go ahead and press the green install button right here. And it's going to take a minute to install, but once you're done, you should see the uninstall button right here. Now we're also going to install Steam Link because theoretically you should be able to stream games onto your PC as well. And we'll test that here later in this section, but spoiler alert, it doesn't really work as far as I can tell. Either way, once you have those two downloaded, we're almost ready to go. The next thing we want to do is install Proton. This will allow us to play Windows game on this Linux based operating system. What you want to do here is go into the search bar and then type in the word Proton and enter. 
After a moment, you're gonna see a bunch of different options right here. And what we wanna do is install these three options that I've circled. And so just like with installing Steam, you wanna press on the green install button and then let it download. And once you have all three of those installed, we are good to go. We're gonna press the close button here on the bottom right, and that'll take us back to the file explorer. From there, we wanna to go to file and close window to get back into Botticera. Next on your controller, press the start button, and then go into game settings and select update games list. Now, when we go into the port section, you should see an option for both Steam and Steam Link. So let's go ahead and open up Steam. When you open it up the first time, it's gonna take a moment because it's gonna download and update the Steam client. And then after that, it's gonna ask you for your username and password. So go ahead and log into your Steam account right here. And once that's done, it's gonna boot you into the desktop version of Steam like this. And essentially at this point, we are now running the Linux version of Steam directly in Botticera. Now to get started, I recommend going to the settings and making two different changes. Number one, go into the Steam Play section here on the bottom and make sure that the enable Steam Play option here is checked. This is gonna make it so that we can play Windows games on our machine. Next, we wanna go into the interface section and then turn on the start Steam in big picture mode. And those are the only two settings you have to mess with. So we're gonna press okay. Then we're gonna go up to Steam and then select exit Steam. Now that's gonna boot us back into Botticera, but the next time we open up Steam, it's gonna take us into the big picture or SteamOS mode. Now, one thing I should mention here that when you're navigating through the SteamOS section, you will see some screen tearing. But as far as I can tell, this only happens in the interface. When you're actually playing a game, you won't see this. Now to get started, you can pick out your games and then start installing them. Now, one thing you may notice is that I have the stream option right here. And that's because I had another PC running at the same time. And so it was offering that I could stream from that game instead of installing it on my machine. So chances are for you, you're probably not gonna see this option. Instead, you'll see the option to install. And bear in mind that the ability to install is only gonna happen with games that have a Linux version. And so for something like SteamWorld Dig 2 or Horizon Chase Turbo, these ones will play natively on Linux. So it's just a matter of selecting the install button and then downloading them from there. However, for other games that do not have a Linux version, there is an extra step. To start, when you try to install it, you'll either see that the install option is not there, or you'll see something like this where it says available for Windows. And what we wanna do here is enable Proton to be able to play this game properly. To do this, we're gonna move over to the right till we get to that cog wheel. From there, select the properties option, and then when this window opens up, go to the compatibility section. Within this section, go ahead and check mark this force option right here. And within here, it's gonna give you the option to choose your Proton version. I found that for Botticera, the one that works the best is this one called Proton GE. So I would recommend selecting that one, and after that, we're good to go. Now, when we get back to the game menu, you can see it just says the word install and nothing about Windows. So let's go ahead and install the game and then try to boot it up. And yeah, as you can see right here, we're now playing a Windows game within a Linux-based operating system. That's pretty cool. Now, for this computer that I'm using right here, I know that only lightweight games are actually gonna work. But within my own game catalog, I found 37 different lightweight and indie games, and each of these had a native Linux version, so I didn't have to use Proton at all. And that's a pretty impressive number. That's about 15% of my games that I can play directly here within Steam. Now, if I want to stick to Indian lightweight games, but I want to try out Windows games as well, by using Proton, I was able to actually double the amount of games that I could play. In fact, every single one of these lightweight games that I tried worked within Proton. And now my game collection has grown to 64 different titles. That's pretty impressive as well. Okay, now that we have these games installed, let me show you how to boot them directly from Botticera so we don't have to go into Steam. And to start, we need to go into Steam one more time. From there, press the B button to bring up the quick menu, then go into Power and select Exit Big Picture Mode. And once we're back into the desktop client, let's go into the library section. From there, we wanna go into the filter option and then check the one that says Installed Locally. This is gonna put all of our installed games up top. From there, using our mouse and keyboard, we're gonna click on the top game, then go down to the bottom, hold down Shift, and then click on the bottom game. This is gonna select all of your games and then you can right click to bring up a submenu. Within here, go to manage and then select add desktop shortcuts. And really that's all there is to it. So we can exit out of Steam to get back into Botticera. And then from there, make sure that you update your games list. Now, as you navigate through all your systems, you should now see a Steam section. And within there, you should now see all of your games. And of course, like with all the other systems, you're gonna to wanna to scrape all your fancy box art as well. However, now that you're all set up, all you have to do is just choose your game and it's gonna launch directly into Steam. And the great thing about this too is it's gonna be connected to your Steam Cloud as well. So you're gonna be able to resume your save game from this mini PC just as you would with any other Steam client. And personally, I think this is a great way to play some lightweight or indie games in combination with your retro games too. 
Now, like I mentioned before, there is a Steam Link app and you also have the ability to stream from other consoles. So for example, here when navigating through the Steam menu, if I pull up Final Fantasy VII, it gives me the option to stream this game. And that's because I have my Steam Deck turned on, which has that game installed. So theoretically, I should be able to stream this game from my Steam Deck onto this mini PC. And for all intents and purposes, it does boot up correctly. However, when you actually get into a game, as you can see here, it just flickers and doesn't actually show the game on your screen. But as you can see here, I can control the game from my Bodicera controller. So the connection is working, but there's something up with the video settings. And I've tried this with multiple Bodicera builds on multiple computers, and right now I can't get it to work at all. And so hopefully this is something that'll work in the future, because I think this would be a really cool way to play games on that mini PC as well. Okay, and our last step here is to set up multiplayer with our Bodicera console. And honestly, the setup for this is super easy. First thing, make sure you have two controllers connected to your console. So I have my 8-bit dough here, as well as a wired Xbox controller. From there, go ahead and press start, and then go into the controller settings. After that, just scroll down to the player assignment section. And all you have to do here is just indicate which controller is going to be player 1, and which one's going to be player 2. And honestly, that's really all there is to it. Once you set up your player 1 and player 2, that's basically it. You can go into your game, and they should work just like that. So for example, here's me playing Altered Beast while trying to play both player 1 and player 2 at the same time. And obviously, I'm failing miserably. And in case you missed it during the beginning of the video, I do recommend using two different types of controllers if you are going to play multiplayer. I found that this helps avoid confusion if you're using the same type of controller for both player 1 and player 2. And really, that's all there is to it when it comes to setting up multiple controllers on Parasera. It's a very easy process. Alright, and that wraps up this video here. I wanted to show you how to turn any PC into a retro gaming console, and I think I gave you quite a few tips and tricks along the way. And also bear in mind that there are many different ways that you can enjoy Bodicera. For example, you could put this inside of an arcade cabinet, or you could even install Bodicera onto a flash drive and then plug that directly into any old PC. In fact, I made a video about that last year, and it remains one of my most popular videos on this channel. Either way, I personally really like this idea of having a standalone retro console like this. And the fact that we can set this all up with a used or cheap mini PC is pretty awesome too. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you already have something like this set up? Or do you plan on making your own retro gaming console in the future? As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.